These days, integrated graphics on computers are extremely powerful, being able to reach hundreds of frames per second in our favorite games, but before that, they were much more primitive. This is an HP Pavilion Elite from 2010. It has a Foxconn This motherboard with an AMD Phenom 2x6 CPU, 8GB of DDR3 RAM and is based on an AM3 platform. Back in the day, CPUs didn't include integrated graphics, so without a discrete graphics card, you wouldn't get any video until AMD had the wonderful idea to start integrating a basic GPU into some chipsets. Say hello to the AMD 785G, which includes a Radeon HD 4200 integrated GPU. It was released in 2009 and was included on desktop motherboards and in laptops. It was designed for basic tasks, the type of shit you use to type documents, watch videos and play solitaire. I went to their website to look for drivers and noticed that the latest drivers were from 2013 and only supported up to Windows 8. AMD software and drivers are designed to work best for up-to-date operating systems because Windows 8 is very up-to-date. Luckily, I already have a Windows 7 installed on this computer because there's no way I'm willingly using Windows 8. So, time to set up the graphics. First, I went into the BIOS options and changed primary video adapter from PCIe, the discrete graphics card, to onboard, which is the integrated graphics. I unplugged my monitor from the dedicated graphics card then took a VGA cable and plugged it directly into the motherboard. When I rebooted into Windows 7, I got an AMD message saying no graphics driver was installed or it's not functioning properly. So I went and got the drivers from their website. When they were finished installing and I rebooted, I didn't notice any changes. So I tried installing them again, rebooted and got the same message from earlier saying no graphics driver was installed. So I opened Device Manager and uninstalled the driver for my discrete graphics card. Then reinstalled the 4200 drivers. This time, it was actually installing the AMD display driver. I opened the installation log and it said all the drivers were successfully installed. When I rebooted, Windows Aero automatically activated which proves that the drivers are working. However, I couldn't set the resolution to my monitor's native res which is 1080p. But using a tool called Custom Resolution Utility or CRU, I was able to set 1080p as a custom resolution, then I rebooted and I was able to apply it. But it looked very blurry. I thought it was a VGA limitation or maybe this particular cable, but all I had to do was open the monitor's menu and perform an auto adjustment. And the picture turned sharp. Then, I downloaded GPU Z to look at all the specs of this iGPU. The crap. 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 Mega crap. 200 bucks for all of them. Get out! Now that we know that the GPU is pure dog shit, let's test some games. The first game I tried was Minecraft Java with the Sodium mod, which is supposed to improve performance. I couldn't get MSI Afterburner working, so we have to rely on the in-game FPS counter. After loading up a new world, I was getting around 50 to 70 FPS in 480p windowed mode. But when I went into full screen mode, not only did the frame rate fall off a cliff to around 23 FPS, there was also this strange input lag that affected the keyboard and mouse. This doesn't happen at lower resolutions. The next game I tried was GTA 4, which even on modern powerful hardware is notorious for running like straight a because Rockstar rushed the PC port back in 2008 and still won't fix it. I'm using all medium settings at 1080p, which is what I use with my discrete graphics card, a Radeon HD 5770. Even though Afterburner wasn't showing up, you don't even need it to know the game is running like shit. So I went into the settings and set everything to the absolute lowest at 800 by 600 resolution. This looks like it could be about 10 to 15 FPS, but the input lag was still there, which makes the game unplayable. But I noticed something else that's strange. 
the game logic constantly stutters or skips, slowing down and speeding back up. It's very noticeable when you're driving as you're constantly loading parts of the map, other vehicles and pedestrians and I guess it's too much for this GPU. I ran the benchmarks and I got a whopping average of 16 FPS at 800 by 600 all low settings. Due to the input lag, you can't steer well or aim which may explain the game quite difficult. In cutscenes, you can literally watch the interior of buildings slowly spawn out of thin air. Next, I tried GTA San Andreas which isn't as demanding or unoptimized as GTA 4. I went into the graphics settings and maxed out everything to see how it could handle it. When the opening cutscene started playing, I noticed the frame rate was quite bad and there was lots of color banding. But after turning anti-aliasing off, the frame rate became more normal. But then I remembered I could just use fraps to track the frame rate. It won't be as detailed as Afterburner and I don't exactly know how accurate it is compared to Afterburner but it's better than nothing. At 1080p very high settings, I was getting 30 to 40 fps and at low settings I was getting 40 to 50 fps. But I wanted to know the highest amount of fps I could get so I set the resolution to 640 by 480 low and to my surprise I was getting over 100 fps but the top of the screen was cut off so I did another auto adjustment to fix it. I tried to find a middle ground so I set the resolution to 720p and I was able to get 60 to 70 fps with low settings. But when I set the resolution back to 1080p to test it, I was getting lots of input lag and the same smooth skipping from earlier. I can barely drive. The broken color depth here doesn't help either as it makes the whole game look deep fried. I activated the flying car cheat and flew up into the sky. You can really see the terrible color banding. Anyway, I tried GTA 4 again now that I have a proper FPS counter. On 800 by 600 lowest settings, I was getting 9 to 15 FPS. Paired with the input lag, it's still unplayable. I tried 1080p lowest settings and I was getting a staggering 1 to 6 FPS with truly unlocked PowerPoint mode. Driving directly into a pole, I couldn't steer away even though I had all the time in the world. Throughout all of this, all audio, including the radio, plays smoothly with no problems. I can't show you it though because it's all copyrighted music. This proves that the rest of the hardware can handle the game fine, it's just the GPU being the bottleneck. Then, just for laughs, I run Furmark which is a GPU stress test designed to put graphics cards through pure pain and suffering. I ran it at 1080p and I was getting 0 FPS. A short while later, the test concluded and I got 30 points with 1 FPS. That has to be some sort of world record. I asked my discord server what games I should test. One member said Cyberpunk. But this platform is so old that it doesn't support an instruction set that the game needs to run. So that's out of the question. Another member said Half-Life 2 which should work since it doesn't require any special instruction sets to run. Any computer made in the last 20 years should be able to at least open it. I opened the game and set it to 1080p with all high settings. I was getting around 25 to 30 fps with lots of input lag. Again some issue with this GPU. When I tried setting the resolution to 720p, the picture completely broke, which is either a problem with the game, the monitor, or the GPU. Either way, you can see that we're getting around 40 to 50 fps. Then I set the resolution to the lowest possible, 640 by 480, and I was getting over 100 fps with no input lag. The final thing I wanted to find out was, can it run Crisis? I opened the game and it instantly started mocking my hardware, advertising Nvidia and the Intel Core 2 Extreme. Funny. When I tried setting the resolution to 1080p, the monitor really didn't like it and said it was out of range, which is weird because the other games and Windows itself can run at 1080p. So I ran with 768p instead. I let it scan my hardware and pick the best settings and it set the graphics to all medium. I trusted the game with these settings so I continued. The intro video was proudly boasting over 200 fps, 
but when I was actually rendering graphics, I got a wonderful 7 FPS. I set the graphics to all low and it barely helped. I was getting 13 FPS. Then I set the resolution to the lowest it goes 800 by 600 and I was getting an inconsistent 30 to 40 FPS that dips down to 10 at times. At 768p, there is loads of input lag which makes the game completely unplayable. Can't run crisis confirmed. According to Tech Power, it lists the GPU as only being playable at 640x480 resolution and unplayable at 720p and up, which aligns with what my experience shows. It's also being listed as being over 500% weaker than a GT430, which is one of the graphics cards of all time. And that was the Radeon HD 4200. The lesson we learned today is that you should never plug your monitor directly into your motherboard. If you made it this far, that means you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you dislike it, comment your thoughts and subscribe below to the channel. Thanks for watching.